Senate Republicans are splitting over a measure to increase direct payments to Americans from $600 to $2,000. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocked a vote on the CASH Act Tuesday, but a growing number of his party's members in the Senate support the bill. President Trump also supports the plan and is now voicing his displeasure against lawmakers who do not. And he's also targeting lawmakers who intend to override his veto of the annual defense spending bill, as well as those who refuse to back his attempts to overturn the results of the election. CBS News White House correspondent Paula Reed is keeping track of all of it. From his holiday post in Palm Beach, President Trump today tearing into congressional Republicans, calling leaders pathetic for not backing his baseless voter fraud claims and saying that unless they have a death wish, they should approve $2,000 stimulus checks. That puts the president more in line with Democrats who tried to force a vote on the new direct payments today, already passed by the Democratic-controlled House. There's one question left today. Do Senate Republicans join with the rest of America in supporting $2,000 checks? Today, that answer was no. Object. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocked the Democratic effort, speaking for most Republicans who don't want to spend additional money on stimulus. But some are now suggesting they'd support it, including both Georgia Republicans looking for an edge ahead of a tough Senate runoff election scheduled for next Tuesday. I'm delighted to support the president in this 2000. The president is also furious at House Republicans, many of whom voted last night to override his veto of a sweeping annual defense bill. The Senate is expected to do the same this week, but today Senator Bernie Sanders said he'd block that vote until McConnell allows a vote on stimulus checks. Working families need help now. Not next year, but right now. Senate Majority Leader McConnell has signaled he may be willing to bring those stimulus checks up for a vote, but he tied them to two of the president's other priorities, curtailing protections for social media companies and investigating allegations of voter fraud in the 2020 election. If you tie those issues to the checks, they're unlikely to pass. Omar. Paula Reed, thank you. For more, I want to bring in Jackie Alamini. She's a political reporter for The Washington Post and anchor of the Power Up newsletter and a CBS News alum as well. Uh, Jackie, as Paula just mentioned, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is proposing tying $2,000 checks in exchange for repealing Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act and creating a commission to study election fraud. Is there any appetite for this on Capitol Hill at all? There's certainly no appetite among Democrats. Most of them oppose the inclusion of the election commission and the technology repeal. So that means they'd certainly, you know, vote against the broader measure here. McConnell has sort of set the stage by packaging these things together along with the liability protection. Um, and even though some of the Republicans in his own caucus are in favor of these $2,000 uh, you know, direct payments to the American people, this could lead to a showdown on the Senate floor come Friday. Um, and you know, you, we, we already saw people like Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer come out against McConnell's attempt to package all of these together, uh, claiming that McConnell is trying to poison um, the bill because he is against expanding um, spending right now. Remind our viewers, after the 2016 election, President Trump launched a, a voter fraud commission. Whatever became of that? Right. That this has been uh, mostly a rhetorical tool used by the president. They, there has been no such election fraud found. And after this past election, which President-elect Joe Biden decisively won, and m more than 40 different lawsuits filed and, and fought by the Trump campaign throughout the country and in battleground states that the president, again, decisively lost, um, there has been no proof of uh, election fraud. This is something that McConnell uh, sources are telling us has sort of thrown into the bill to appease the president who has lashed out at Senate Republicans um, and Republicans in general who have not supported and parroted the president's false and unsubstantiated claims that there has been widespread election fraud. Uh, two Republican lawmakers who have voiced support for the increase in direct payments, Senators Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue, both of Georgia, uh, both Republicans. 
uh, both voted for the $600 payments and are both fighting to keep their seats in the upcoming Senate runoff election that's happening next month. How is this issue playing out in their races this late in the game? Yeah, well, we saw, you know, Loeffler, uh, Senator Perdue and Senator Loeffler, who are in really tight runoff races against John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, come out and support these $2,000 stimulus checks, uh, you know, which is something they had not previously done. But the president has put them in a precarious situation. Um, and, you know, he's, he's really pitted Republicans against one another here. Uh, he's debating his own party pretty publicly over this bill and is throwing the Georgia Senate race, um, you know, into uncharted territory right now. It's the last thing really Mitch McConnell needs in these two races that which will decide the control of uh, the Senate and, and to, um, you know, is if Republicans are able to maintain their majority. Uh, but it is has been a very interesting turn of events here. These are two people who have traditionally been, quote unquote, fiscal hawks. Uh, and now they are in favor of more spending. And it's a testament to what Americans want and need right now. Millions of Americans lost their unemployment insurance over this past weekend. Mm -hmm. They're facing the eviction and benefits cliff. Luckily, the president did sign the relief package last week um, that will provide some um, immediate relief. But again, economists, uh, Democrats, and uh, many others argue that the, these $2,000 direct payments are necessary to keep Americans and the economy afloat. Well, well, look, the president has called on Republicans to pass the increase in payments unless they have a, quote, death wish. He's also going after Republicans for refusing to support his baseless claims of voter fraud. Is it seems like the president's kind of putting his party in a jam. You have Mitch McConnell who's listening to him, but the president's not going to be there in the new Congress. Mitch McConnell is. So, so what is he doing to the party? Yeah, it's really unclear what the president's, you know, desired outcome is right now, other than the immediate uh, result, which is being at the center of media coverage uh, and, you know, Trying to trying to ultimately get what he wants. Um, there is some speculation that because he there are prominent Republicans who have not supported his claims of election fraud, uh, that this is the president essentially continuing and extending, uh, throwing his temper tantrum at the expense of the American people by throwing a wrench into stimulus talks. Um, and then you know we also have sources telling us that this is a president who watches cable news. He's been playing golf and watching cable news during his time in Palm Beach, Florida. And he has enjoyed seeing the positive media coverage coming out of this uh, pushing for the $2,000 stimulus checks because Americans are in need at the moment. Um, unfortunately, it has come at the expense of the American people. And you've got to wonder why this president wasn't more invested and involved in negotiations leading up to it and why Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin had been previously and consistently pushing for $600 checks. Uh, so, you know, this president is certainly going out um, January 6th, uh, January 20th, January 6th would be when the Senate um, will and Vice President uh, Mike Pence will confirm that Joe Biden is the winner of the Electoral College and, and the incoming president. Uh, and, and this president is certainly going out as he came in with a lot of media coverage, soaking up all of the oxygen in the air. And, and something I want to get to real quick. During his first run for office, then candidate uh, Trump ran on eliminating the national debt. And here's actually what he, what he told our Nora O'Donnell about that in June 2016. Take a listen. The current plan that you've put forward, independent economic analysts have looked at it and said that it would add $30 trillion to the deficit because you're going to reduce taxes. You're not going to cut entitlements. There's some questions about whether we're going to bring back jobs. I'm going to bring back businesses. We're going to have a lot of people come into How? our country. We're going to have people come into our country. Look. How do you do Companies that? now are leaving the United States, corporate inversion. They're leaving the United States. We have almost $5 trillion sitting out there where they can't get the money back. They can't bring it in because there's no mechanism to bring it back in, and the tax is so high. For the country, we have $19 trillion in debt. It's going to be very soon $21 trillion, not billion, $21 trillion in debt. And I will tell you, we are sitting on a time bomb, and Hillary Clinton doesn't have a clue. And President Obama has pretty much doubled the debt since he's been in office. And somebody's going to pay a big price. We have to start chopping that debt down. How do Mr. Trump's statements then 
square with what he's calling for now because that's the deficit and the, de the debt is not, is not shrinking. If there has anything that's been a consistent reoccurring theme of Trump's president presidency, it has been his inconsistency when it comes to his multitude of campaign promises, some of which he's followed through on and some of which he's directly contradicted. Um, but I think this president has consistently shown that he has little regard for the national deficit. And quite frankly, other Republicans in the party have criticized um, you know, the GOP, their own party, for being inconsistent when it comes to their interest in deficits. Ted Cruz went on HBO in an interview a few weeks ago and said that you know, Republicans are only interested in deficits when there is a Democrat in the White House. But when there's a Republican, uh, you know, there is less attention and, and less financial constraints on hashing things out. Um, I think that, you know, you have had some of the most prominent fiscal hawks like Mick Mulvaney, Trump's former chief of staff, and these people have left the White House. Um, and, and now at this point, there is little, I think, driving philosophy uh, and um, ideology that is driving the president's decisions other than one, you know, twofold, keeping uh, keeping the economy afloat during a pandemic when, you know, millions of Americans, again, are unemployed, having trouble putting food on the table um, and and dying. Uh, 330,000 Americans have, have mm -hmm. died. And then twofold to this, you know, the, the positive media coverage that the president's seeing in response to, uh, you know, proposing these increase in direct payments to Americans. Well, 2020 is coming to an end, but the political season will not come to an end. Jackie Alamany, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Omar.